With this video I will show user login and logout modules. It will include identifying the logged in user and applying the identification to the content pages. It will show the power of Wappler's built-in security provider. Hi, I'm Ben Plesier and, like you, a fervent user of Wappler. I start where I left off in the previous video. I open the main layout page. Here I select the modal that I created in the last video. This time I will insert a login form under the login tab. To do this, I remove the paragraph and replace it with a pre-built form from blocks, forms and login form. Because the form was not designed to be located within a modal, I need to change the container to a fluid container. For the column, all I need is the call class, so I remove the rest. I give the form a recognizable ID. And change the method to, post. I then proceed to enter validation rules for the inputs. For the email field I could have added the extra email validation. On purpose I have not done this. In a later video, when I address the admin login, I want them to be able to log in using a plain name. The form needs a cancel button in case the user wants to opt out of logging in. I click the before arrow of the current button. In the pop equals up I select, button. I change the button text. And change the ID. Give it some styling. and scroll down to dynamic events in the properties panel. Here I apply a mouse on click event. For the action I choose to hide the modal dialog. I could have changed the second button text. However, submit sounds okay to me. I do change the styling and change the type to submit. Save the file and close it. I will be returning here once the server side actions have been established. For this, I click on the workflows icon and in the security folder I add a new API action. I call this action, user underscore login. This creates a JSON file bearing the same name. I need to bind the form inputs to the server action. I do this by selecting input and choosing the page that contains the form. I can then select the form within the page. Notice how important it is to give the form an identifiable ID. When I click the import from form button, we see the posted values complete with server side validation. I close the input node and can now create the algorithm for the actions. Remember the email in lowercase? That is what I need to do first, change the email address to lowercase. I right click execute and choose add action. This is a core action called, set value. I enter a name for the value. For the value, I select the posted email address and click the format button. In the pop-up menu, I select text and convert to lowercase. I close the various windows and go to the next step which is the login step. I right-click the previous step and add a new action. In the pop-up I go down to the security provider. This is where I choose login. In the properties panel I change the user name to the formatted email address. The password requires encryption so that it can be compared to the encrypted password in the database. 
I select the posted password and click on the format button. In the pop-up, I select the SHA-256 hash. The salt is as I specified in the previous video. Remember is set to true by entering 1. Save the file and the login procedure is done. When a user has logged in, Wappler stores the information in a module called Identity. The identity can be used to filter data like personal information. It can also be used on the front end to show and hide components. The easiest way to access the identity is to place it in globals. To do this, I click on globals, right click on execute and add a new A action. In the pop-up I go down to security provider and choose security identity. Save the JSON file. For the next step, I go back to the security folder. Here I add a new API action called, user underscore logged in. With this step I want to access the logged in user information. In the steps panel I create a new action. In the pop-up I choose core actions and condition. The condition is the security identity. Inside the condition, I add an action step. In the pop-up, I choose database actions and database single query. Single query because there will always be one entry. I open the query builder. Here I choose the users table. Then select all of the columns. The condition is that the user ID is the same as the security identity. What does all this mean? When security identity contains a value, it means that the user has logged in. If that is the case then query the database for the user's details. I save the JSON file. Lastly, I need to create a logout action. In the security folder, I add a new API action and name it, user underscore logout. In the JSON file I add an action step. In the pop-up, I go down to Security Provider and choose Security Logout. Save the file and we are done with the back end. Close all of the open files and open the main layout page. Now that I have created three new API actions, I need to connect to them in the front end. The login action will be activated when the login form is submitted. The other two, logout and user logged in, need to be connected using server connect. To do this, I right click on app. In the drop down, I select data and server connect. The ID is changed to something meaningful. Then I select the server action. This is user underscore logout. It is important to make sure that the server action is not automatically loaded. The action is loaded when the logout button is clicked on. The second server action is included in the same manner as the first. This time the server action is user underscore logged in. This server action is allowed to be auto-loaded. Then I select the login form. I make it a server connect form. For the action I choose user underscore login. While the login form is selected, I go down to Dynamic Events. In the pop-up, I select Server Connect and Success. For the action I first choose to load the logged in user Server Connect.
Then I add a success notification showing that the user is logged in. Lastly, the modal is hidden from view. Click on Select to close the dialog. Using the same notification process, I show a danger notification if the user is not authorized. That is, they enter the wrong details. Now I will add a logout button. I select the login button and click on the before arrow. In the pop-up, I select form and button. Don't worry about the position of the button, this is because of the flex container and the spacing that was applied. There will be just the one button shown at a time and that will be properly positioned. I change the button text. In the Properties panel I scroll down to Dynamic Attributes. In the pop-up, I select Display and Show. For when it is shown, I go to the user logged in server connect and choose Identity. Remember that Identity will only have a value when the user is logged in. While here, I click on Dynamic Events. In the pop-up, I select mouse and click. For the action, I choose to load the logout server action. I also reset the logged in user server action. This is so that security identity is updated. To top it off, I create a notification that the user has successfully logged out. Lastly, I still need to hide the login button when the user is logged in. I select the login button and select dynamic attributes. In the pop-up, I select display and hide. For the when, I choose identity. And we are done, save the file and we can start the testing phase. As you know by now, the layout page can only be tested by loading a content page into the browser. I therefore open the index page. Before I open it in a browser, let's have some fun and welcome the logged in user by name. To do this, double click on the welcome heading to select it. Add a space and click on the thunderbolt. In the pop-up, select the user first name. Save the page. Now I open the index page in the browser and click on the login button. When the correct login details have been entered and the submit button has been pressed, I am greeted with my name and a message stating that I have logged in. When I click on the logout button, the message says that I have logged out and my name disappears. When I enter the wrong login details, I get a message stating same. I hope that this video has helped you. I will continue to create videos. There are many more topics that can be covered while creating this project and I would love to cover them all at the same time. Unfortunately this is not possible, so I will go through the list one at a time. Thank you for watching and hope to see you for my next video in the series.